Hello everybody and welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T and today I do want to go through how I capture player props information. Now this can be seen as an archaic way by many that um, you know I'm not doing anything too fancy. I'm using VBA and spreadsheets and kind of click and drag copy paste methods but it works for me. I know how to do it quickly because I've gotten used to the rhythm and the keyboard cadence and things like that. So this works really well for me. Now the great thing is this information is free as of right now. And when I do this, I'm capturing not only the open book lines, but I can also capture it from multiple sources in one go. I can also go ahead and get the closing line if I go ahead and do this later in the day on Sunday for football. So this method works really well for me. I don't know if it'll work well for everybody else. It may take a little bit of time to get used to, but once you get used to it, you move through it pretty darn quickly. Uh, and then once you have all the VBA stuff written out, it's just reuse and recycling it, so it's not a big problem. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to head over to bettingpros.com. Um, if you come up into the top nav over here, you're going to find a bunch of different options. You're going to go to odds, player props. It'll take you to a screen similar to this. And then you're going to go ahead and set the week that you want, as well as the prop type that you want. So I right now have it set to receiving yards over and under. Now you're going to start over here. It's going to look like a little hand grabbing. Um, you're just going to click down and start to copy all this information down and just keep scrolling down. When you get near the bottom, you're going to see this ellipse appearing. That means that it's trying to load up more players. It's making probably another API call to get the next batch going since it's kind of an infinite scroll kind of build. So you're going to have to kind of just wait this one out. Um, you know, it's going to keep loading and then you'll slowly scroll down and then it'll load again and then slowly scroll down and load again. So we're going to just do this really quickly and then we'll jump over to the Excel. I'll probably capture all these. All right, so I've reached the bottom. We are now getting into the Thursday night game. So I'm just going to go ahead and come down here holding shift and click and that's going to highlight everything in between. So you just start the highlight at the top, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, get down to where you want. Go just to the right of where it says view matchup and copy this information in. Now what's nice is you're getting the opening, the best odds, and if you want to deal with all of the data, you can see who posted what from which place. Now this does depend upon your time that you're capturing this data. So just keep that in mind. Again, you can see the opener and best odds are kind of changing on some of these. Um, right 32 and a half we're already down to 29 and a half stuff like that so let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet all right so right now we are kind of zoomed in um, but i will show a little bit more of what's going on here these are already pre-programmed formulas in here um, that you won't need to worry about right now i'll get into these in a moment but once you've copied all of that information you're just going to come up into cell a1 click paste and it's going to take some time it's going to churn through and it's going to paste all of that information in there okay now that it's got that information in there there's a couple of things that you're going to want to do while this column is highlighted you're going to click f5 and then you're going to come to special move this up so you can see you're going to click blanks and hit ok now it's going to select all the blanks in column a Hold down the control button and tap the minus button. That means to delete all of those blanks. You're going to say shift the cells up. So it's going to take a moment here while it does that. It's going to shift everything to the top. That way we get rid of all the weird spacing that's in here so that a formula can work. The next thing you're going to want to do is there's going to be hidden objects in here that you want to get rid of. Um, down here, let's see, where is it? Right around somewhere in here. If you get like kind of like the crosshairs, that means that there's an object. If you just come up to find select, go to special and choose objects, hit OK, and then just click delete and then it deletes them all out. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is this. You're going to have a function that you're going to create called get URL. You will click Alt F11 to open up the editor here. Now I can't easily zoom on this, unfortunately. Um, but in here, you're going to have function get URL, parenthesis RNG as range, close parenthesis, and then as string, on error resume next, get URL equals RNG dot hyperlinks, parenthesis L, close parenthesis dot address, and function. So what that's going to do is create a function in here. So I'm going to actually point this, right? So we'll delete this out. 
I would say equal get URL, and then I'm gonna to point to what? Well, the player's name came in as a hyperlink. I'm gonna click that and then close this parenthesis and hit enter. Now it gives me the URL, and at the end of that URL, I can see a player name. So I'm gonna be able to modify this information. So then I'm gonna say this column, column C, I want this one to actually point to this one so that I know what game it is. Here, I'm gonna use this one for the over. I'm gonna use this one to the under. And again, remember, these are what the open was. If you don't wanna use the open and you wanna use the best option, right, it would be the data set below that based upon the way the Betting Pros website was laid out. So you can kinda of just pick which ones you want. So if maybe you know these two are MGM and that's all you bet, you would wanna pull those in. But right now I'm just gonna use the opening line. So we're gonna use this one. And then here, I wanna know if it's a tight end or not and what team, so I'm gonna reference it there. Now here, this is a formula that you can see as a string. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking the right set of information and I'm going the length of this, minus 50, because that's how many extra characters there are, which is going to go ahead and return me this player's name only, right? Because then I'm gonna go here, the right of this, and then to the left of it. So that way it'll trim out Tyler dash Conklin slash, and then I'm gonna go left of that. So in here, this is the formula equal left parenthesis, right parenthesis, whatever cell the formula is in. So B1 comma len B1 minus 50, close parenth comma len B1 minus 51. And then that way it returns you the player's name. Now, so there is that little hyphen in there. To get rid of that, we have another formula we can run, which is replace. We say equals replace G1, because we're referencing that cell, find the hyphen in G1, and we're gonna start with one character, and we're gonna replace it with one space, which now gives us the player name. So now that we have this, and if we look here, there are a lot of rows that we'd have to do this in. Now the nice thing again is that Betting Pros is very systematic in the way it lays its data out. If data is missing for a book, they just put NL or off, right? So that way you can actually just use a common formula. Let's open back up our VBA editor. Now that we have the editor open, we're gonna start a new sub, so, right? A subroutine. So sub, copy formula every rows or whatever you wanna name it you will write dim formula row as integer, dim skip rows as integer, dim last row as integer, dim current row as integer, dim ws as worksheet. So we're gonna set this up as a worksheet. Now this is on sheet two currently, so I would just change out sheet three to sheet two. And then we're gonna define the rows that need to be adjusted, right? The formula is gonna be one. So the reason I put one is because all of my formulas that I'm using are in row one. All right, now we're gonna tell it to skip 36 rows and we can make sure real quick, let's just go ahead and say this row to this row, right? That's 36, so there's 36 rows between the one and the next one. So that way it'll skip 36. Again, depending upon where you put these values will dictate how you need to lay this stuff out. So once we do that, we're gonna say last row equals the worksheet in its cells. It's gonna count how many rows there are so it knows how to iterate through this. Then we'll say for current row equals formula plus skip lines plus one to last row. Step skips plus one, so that means it's gonna be going in through and calculating all the way. Then we just have this formula copying and pasting our rows. So here it's gonna copy B to H. Since it's gonna copy B to H, then it's gonna to go to the next row and then paste the formula in. And then once it's done, um, you'll have all that information. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this really quick. While it's running, if you do see this happen, right, all the screen goes gray and these things are flickering, it's because it's churning through as fast as it can. Don't worry about it, it's not a problem. And it says it is done running. Let's go down to the bottom most one. And great, our formulas are in there. Now I have my workbook set up that it will only recalc if I hit F9, so I can hit F9 and get recalcs going again. Now in here, you'll notice that there are some like mistakes that you could miss, like this one has an extra hyphen in it because of the, um, the way that the name is, right? So they put wide receiver on Mike Williams, so I would just need to go ahead and update that. 
So it got rid of the first one, but I would still need to trim off that last one. So occasionally there is some data scrubbing you still need to do. But this way now, I have the player's link, the game, I have the original over, I have the original under, I have the player uh, position and team, their name as it would be in the URL, and their actual name. So using this information, you can now transform it. Now I'm going to show you what mine usually looks like. Now I was in the middle of updating a bunch of code and logic, but basically I have a spreadsheet that will then intake, let me zoom in, all of this information. I've got the player, the team, the position, the opponent, receiving yards, receptions, receiving yards over, under, receptions, over, under, and longest reception. Um, so in here, this information then is going to get pulled in based upon what we've generated over here. Now, how you do that is up to you. I use a lot of lookups. Um, so in here, I would just say, hey, for the team, look up Derek Henry from sheet two, where his name is in column H, and then return me, you know, whatever information is in here, like column F if I wanted their position, right? I'd say return me the position, but return me only the last two characters. So if we were to do this real quick, um, I'll show you what that looks like, equal indirect. I'm just gonna put a double quote for now. And I will do a match of a two. Now I'm gonna come over to the sheet that we just did from column H, right? H to H, zero. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this and enter it here. And I want it to return me F. All right, so it returned me F. Now that I have that information, I can also then say write of that returned value two characters gives me that he's a running back. And I can do something similar here. If I were to do this, and all of my team names have uh, three characters, the way I've set my system up, they all have three characters. So then I can just say left of that one and return me three. And there we go, Baltimore's running back. Now for the opponent, right, I would do the same thing. I would try and look up the information in here, right, depending upon if they're home or away or however the data set up, right, it'll be the inverse. So it's either New Jersey or Minnesota or Baltimore or whomever they're playing. So in here, same thing, we'll do that. Let's see here, that was in column F. Column F contains that. I'm sorry, not column F, column C contains that info. So I would just take this info, come here, and this is going to return me C and say three. So Baltimore is playing Cincinnati because again, Baltimore is at Cincy. So if Baltimore was the home team, I would say left because then it's going to get me the first three characters of the left. And then you're just going to use formulas now to go look up and fetch this information and parse it out. So that's how I do it. It's kind of an archaic method, uh, but it gets the job done and then I can load this sheet into my model and it will loop through each player, the team, the position, the opponent, receiving, receptions, over, under, and then it uses all of the other data that I'm feeding it to run calculations, do predictive analytics, see where we're gonna be at and give me my projection. Now in here, I also have historical. So now I have a history of the former week and I just keep copying and pasting this information in week over week over week and then at the end of the year I have a full season of information. So again if you do this say at the last minute you can then capture from betting pros the open and close numbers which can be very useful for you in the future. So that is it. Uh, again VBA to me comes to the rescue. It's nice, it's simple, it's quick. I don't wanna to have to hammer another website trying to figure out API calls or anything like that, especially stuff with like infinite scroll that can be a little hard to do. So rather than dealing with all of that, I'd rather just, you know, within 30 seconds to a minute, click and drag, get through all of the data that I can, and then go ahead and just copy paste it into Excel, use some formulas and VBA to parse out the data I need. Now I have a historical backlog and I have the data that I needed. So if you do find this information useful or you like the content that I am providing, feel free to subscribe. That way you're notified as soon as the next video is available. If you think this information is helpful or useful for anybody else, please like the video. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithms and others can find it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to drop a comment down below and I will go ahead and respond to you. If you wanna reach me, you can reach me on X at wagered on tilt 
or you can reach me in the unabated discord as the T. So that's all I have for today. Again, this is just a way for you to quickly collect prop information, save that prop information, and then that way build up a historical backlog of this info. And you can start evaluating books, lines, and things like that from a historical perspective. So until next time, happy wagering.